anyone can make it out of group A, but Pain has a tiny chance of doing it. I think it's really just between us, Tigers, and Flash Wolves. Oh, I think it's our team and our team is our team. I think we did well at CAG, but I think we did well at the end of the game. Before we lost to Ku, the last time we lost was like three months ago. It felt really shitty to lose. The first three games were just playing super weird, that's not CLG at all. 어 저희 팀은 저도 예측을 못해요. 어 저희가 이 정도로만 해왔으면 이제 더 잘할 수 있거라 생각을 하고 아마 오늘은 더 좋은 경기력이 나오지 않을까 생각하고 있어요. I want us to play like CLG should play. That's all I want to see is on the last day, like if we play our best, can we be the first seed? Once again, the fans have assembled in Ladoc Pullman here in Paris to cheer on their teams as they fight to continue their journey towards the Summoner's Cup. And of course, here earlier today, Zion Spartan, the rest of CLG gearing up for their first game of the day against Koo. A few more cosplayers in the audience to enjoy as well. Azir and Sejuani looks like she left Bristol at home. The Koo Tigers fueling up. Very necessary before a big game to start the day for CLG, but for all of these teams, they're going to be playing multiple games today. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, and with me are some of the brightest minds in League of Legends, English language LPL caster Jake Spawn Tiberi, the NALCS's Aiden Zyrene Moon, and jungler of the NALCS's Renegades, Alberto Crumbs Rengifo. Welcome back for week two, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. It's great to be here. Crumbs. Feels even better. Feels, yeah. feels even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> I don't know. I think I feel a little better than week him. one. Where are we at? Well, last week brought some results that were surprising to say the least. North American third seed Cloud9 sits across, atop Group B. Meanwhile, European third seed Origin is leading Group D. And of course, that means China's number one seeded LGD is 03 in week one. Man, LGD, they were up there for people who thought that they were going to be winners of this tournament, or at least in the finals, they were top three in a lot of people's books, but they came out and they did not look like LGD that we saw in the LPL. They looked all over the place, and a lot of their players are playing very scared, and I've heard that uh, TBQ has been under the weather from his own uh, social media, but I think that's a factor as well, and the rest of the team has just been Yeah, and it's funny, you say it's the LGD we're not expecting to see out of the LPL, but this is the LPL team that we got 50% of the time. The one thing that we can say, they're a good best of five teams, they're probably not going to get to that stage. They've lost one this year against EDG, it was 3-2, but their best of one play, hey, they've only played three of them, they've lost all three. Yep, they have to go for that 3-0 sweep. They yep. really had to hope for a 3-0 I was going to say, it kind of just stresses the importance of being able to perform in best of ones through this group stage. And as each day this week is about settling the score in one group at a time, we're going to start with Group A. Group A is slowly shaping up to be a two-horse race, but the Flash Wolves and Pain are still in it. So let's check out the standings. With favorable head-to-head, -head, CLG and Ku are in control of their fate and just need to beat the teams below them to advance. Very important to note. You know, Ku is a team that's known for having deep champions pools and dismantling teams. I think that's what they did to CLG last time they faced each other, where they had a composition and a style that really picked on the pressure points that CLG is weak to. And they decided that, you know what, we're going to show us our best picks. Victor mid, Kuro is the guy that brought Victor to the meta altogether. He was amazing in this champion. Smeb, he's got a lot of top lane carries that are none of the juggernauts that we've seen. The Riven tops, the Kennen, the Lissandras, these pools go deeper than we have seen, and I think they're going to come out swinging and just take the whole group. And I like what you mentioned, because if there is a blueprint that Ku can once again manufacture, the teams below CLG, they're only one game off. If they start stealing these wins, especially if Flash Wolves are able to get it back together against Pain Gaming, who they did lose against, this is still a wide open group for me. And, you know, definitely agree. CLG should be the front runner to take that second position, but you can never take anything for granted. Yeah, but the Flash Wolves did lose to Pain Gaming, so now they're one and two. 
too. So being behind them just a little bit and not having the head-to-head -head against CLG just yet, you're hoping for a tiebreaker if you're Flash Wolves. But after game one and two, man, they're probably both going to be two and two together. Oh, we'll see, because I don't know. I think CLG might be able to pull it out. We'll have to yeah, see. Yeah, only time will tell. Well, today's games will decide which two teams will advance out of Group A and which teams will have their world's run cut short. We start with the clash of the squads fighting for first as CLG face off against the Koo Tigers. After that, Flash Wolves will battle Brazil's Pain Gaming, who will stay on the rift to face the Koo Tigers afterwards. If there are any tiebreakers, we'll bring you those matches immediately following our regularly scheduled matches today. Game one is huge, though. CLG wins. They'll have a tie head-to-head -head with Koo. Big when we consider the implications getting out of groups. I'm not convinced at all. That performance that Koo had against CLG really spoke to the weaknesses of CLG. I have a huge rant about them and their style and how it's come from the North American LCS. They've never really been tested, and they're not focusing on helping double lift carry. They need to use this guy to take tier two towers during the laning phase. He's so strong, and with champions like Tristan Jinx, you can get bigger gold leads than their unnatural fetish for grouping as five mid for the tier one tower at every second possible. They can do this if they really just carry with double lift. Yeah, and the problem with that was they went middle against a victor who just kept wave clearing in one ability instead of getting the tier two bottom, which I definitely agree with you was a big misstep there because it's just the formula of CLG. They're basically going step one, step two, step three, and I think Koo have them figured out. And you can't have Telegraph play. If Origin showed us anything against these te Korean teams, it is you can beat them around the map, not if you play the way CLG did. So I was the same. It was kind of one of these dissecting moments where it looked like once again another uh, team had been exposed by a very smart team in Koo Tigers, but I think that CLG can bounce back. And let's keep in mind the importance of this match. If CLG were to lose this game, a lot of, uh, a lot of attention gets turned to the winner of Flash Wolves and Payne, given the fact that they might then be able to make a run for that second seed. As I said before, the pressure on the loser out of this game is absolutely massive. If you drop this game, you're with everyone else. Yes. All right, well, oh, go for it. CLG do, does have the 1-1 one, one over, or 1-0 oh over both the teams below them, so that's still something to keep in mind. They're never going to get 2 0 so they might get a tiebreaker, even if they fall a little bit. Yeah, there is a little bit of insurance there. Well, today is do or die as these teams fight for a spot in the quarterfinals, and we want to get your thoughts, so tweet us at Lully Sports and tell us which player or lane you think will carry their team specifically out of Group A and why. Gentlemen, do you have any thoughts regarding this? Yeah. All tournament long, I've been on the mid laner and the jungler, <clears throat> beg my pardon, of the Flash Wolves. Casa and Maple, they're just looking so strong coming into the tournament. And Maple hasn't really had that game we're waiting for yet. I think that with a couple of days break, they're now very used to playing in this setting. They could go off and really impact the map. I mean, for me, I don't think CLG is going to beat Koo, but if they have a way of doing so, it has to beat the Afro. You know, we've known this guy to be the shot caller. Xmithy doesn't do a lot of the shot calling. It's Afro. He has to be the one to direct his team and tell him, look, come to this lane. We're winning. We need to push this advantage and open the map through this one. If Zion's getting leads, fine. Switch it to the top lane, but really focus on that strength and win that way as opposed to trying to help something that's been working for a year. That's not going to fly here. Yeah, he's got to have that flexibility against Koo. And I'm looking at Koo's support, Gorilla, who's going to be up in the bottom yeah. lane against him. Gorilla even showed in their game against Payne that when they are behind, they always have a way back into the game off of his mid-game shot calling, off of his mid-game plays that he's going to be making on his Thresh and his pick champions. So Gorilla's the guy, I think, even if Koo gets into a deficit, can still pull them out of the game. All right, well, there's a few ideas for you there. Remember to send your answers to at Esports and include the hashtag Worlds, and we'll have our analyst desk weigh in a little later in the broadcast. Right now, though, gentlemen, it's time to pull you for your predictions. Who's going to be taking this first match? I think Koo Tigers will take this first match. The way that they beat CLG last time was watching someone just dissect a team. And as I said, I do really respect CLG and their resilience. I think they will bounce back. Will it be enough against Koo? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm also going to have to go with Koo Tigers here. I was doing a whole bunch of research. I really wanted to pull for CLG, but it just looked like a step-by-step -step process that Koo had dissected. Also, this is not, and Doublelift talked about it in the roll-in, this is not the CLG that we saw at Madison Square Garden. Zion Spartan has given up first blood in all three games. They are not getting a top lane advantage, and they're not able to play on multiple sides of the map. And in that, when that happens, they're on the Lulu crutch in mid lane for Poe Belter, and when that was banned out, they didn't seem to have an answer. Crumbs? I've had my communion, I've said my prayers, but I think it's time to leave the church. I'm all out of faith. CLG is not going to be coup. Coup for the win. And that's because this is a team that's shown three carries. Smeb, 
Kuro and Prey have really shown that they can take over games. And for CLG, it's only been double lift. It's a double lift show with the Lulu or just really protecting me with Jinx and Tristana. It, I'm not sold. With a one threat comp and strategy, you cannot be a team as solid as Kill right now. Yeah. But CLG, they can pull out a win here if they pull out something new yeah. or they go back to their Madison Square Garden performance and Koo has something that's almost like their IEM performance because we've seen different variations of these teams and that's what... So the whole thing they choke here. Yeah. Well, it's going hey, back in time uh, quite a way this. Or, or the more diplomatic way of saying it, anything can happen in a best of one. Boom. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, as we throw it over to our casting trio to kick off our games, Gorilla says last week's victory over CLG has changed his opinion on who he thinks will make it out of groups. 어 제가 생각하기에는 저희 팀이랑 요 FW인 것 같고요. <웃음> CAG도 잘한다고 생각을 했었는데 저희가 경기를 해보니까 좀 어, 저희 생각만큼 그렇지 않은 것 같아서 아마 저희랑 FW가 올라가지 않을까 생각하고 있어요. Well, it may be harsh words, but they are honest and yep. they ring true. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Trevor Quickshire Henry. To my right is Martin Deficio Lunger. And joining us, fresh off the analyst desk, it is, of course, Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels. Guys, we're loading up for our first match of the day. It is Counter Logic Gaming taking on the Koo Tigers. The theoretical battle for first place, as they are both two and one. Analyst has talked about it when it comes to seeding, just how important this game really is. Yeah, and also just. For CLG, I think mentally bouncing back, having a better performance because last week it was not pretty. I mean, it was such a one-sided match. Good Tigers just had the number. Yeah, and the analyst desk is talking about, okay, CLG has to debut something new, but I promise you the Koo Tigers are a team that have tricks up their sleeve. Now we've seen, I've been looking at Gorilla's solo queue, a lot of Vagar, a lot of uh, Tom, Tom Kench. Kench, man. So there's some stuff that they haven't shown yet that could be a major factor in this match. Yeah, we also need to see Paul Builder kind of a better performance. He played Azir in the last game after Lulu was banned away at Champion. He's done really well on before, but the Azir performance, I mean, he was under a lot of pressure. They were camping him, but he also had some missed plays. He was very greedy in the way he was positioning on the map. That cost him quite a lot. That needs to be a lot better because it's very important with the strategy CLG is playing that the mid laner is always doing well, so you can push your waves down to the towers and then rotate in the AD carries to take down these turrets. And we were also talking about, or the analyst desk was talking about his first blood, giving it up in every single game. And he plays recklessly. He gets in lane. It looks like his jungler is there, but Xmithy's never there. And then he plays too far forward. He gets himself killed. And Ku did a great job of playing around that in the last game, just moving forward, taking him out to start out the match. Strategic mismatch. Last time CLG and Ku played. We'll see if history repeats itself. Before that, let's take a look at those starting lineups, gentlemen. On the blue side, it is Counter Logic Gaming with Zion Spot and the man that needs to step up in the top lane. Xmithy in the jungle. A Poe Belter. When he's not on Lulu, he's not winning. Winning. Double lift the AD carry as well as Aframu their support. Six lol is of course the coach. And on the red side, we have the good Tigers. They won last week. They want to do the same again. Top lane, we have Smep. Hojin is in the jungle. And of course, Koro in the mid lane taking on Poe Belder. Prey is going to be the AD carry. Fantastic Ash performance last week. Gorilla as the support. And Nofe is their coach behind the team. You see him right here giving a few tips. Talking about pick, uh, picks and bans last time, they had a fantastic one against CLG. Yeah, and let's talk about that a little bit more. The Blitzcrank, I really did not particularly like. I thought it was quite early. I personally felt Ku um, have had some questions of picks and bans when we talked about their loss uh, against Flash Wolves, for example. What are we expecting between these two teams who have had, let's call it speed bumps of varying degrees last week? Monty? Uh, well, with Ku, I didn't. There were some problems mostly with the bans I felt in their match up against the Flash Wolves, a little cocky to let that gang plank through and not ban the Nidalee. But other than that, I felt that their draft against CLG was very good. I think that CLG forgot that that cannon was a flex pick because it's only been played by Ku once this year in the top lane position. And it was in the spring season. So you have to really think back to, uh, to predict yeah. that one. It's a very clear thing for the pick and ban faces we see for CLG, how much focus they put on Doublelift and Aphromoo having that strong 2v2 lane. Because they see the Ash and like, oh, Blitzcrank, hard counter, we can kill him in lane, super easy, take that tower, you know, get rolling from it. But then, as you just said here, didn't expect the cannon to be swapped, Morgana to be put in in place, obviously to shut down this Blitzcrank. But we also see for CLG, very often they ban away like Kalista to try and give a favorable matchup for, for Doublelift down the bottom lane, give him that Tristana, even though you could play it into Kalista if he feels confident doing it. CLG, they'll have a lot of things they should 
focus yeah. on banning. Like, there's a lot of hard engaged stuff, like Ash and Malphite. Are we going to see? About. I mean, CLG's banned Callista two of their games. We've seen it ban all three times. Um, GP, still a consideration. Maud, still a consideration. Lulu, still a consideration. Like, there are so many possibilities here. I think they have to ban Victor. Kuro is 17 and 4 all time on this champion. The wave clear really shuts down the way that CLG likes to play. And what's so interesting about Kuro is he came into this tournament and he's had a very dominating performance. In three games, he's 17, 1, and 22 for a 39 KDA. And his only death was diving a fountain at the end of the game as Victor against CLG. So just very to, uh, confident play. Mentioned there some of the hard engaged champions. We're about to talk a little bit about Ash as well after this Victor could come in as the ban for CLG. But this is simply because when you run these comps, where you want to group very early and siege towers, hard engage is what kills you. The fact that Prey can aim that arrow so fantastically, honestly, nail it from across the map, hit CLG when they're sitting in mid lane and get the engage going, it's been so effective for Good Tigers and one of the reasons they shut down CLG in the last game. Counter Logic Gaming are target banning coup here, removing some of those strengths of those duo lane champions we touched on. And that cannon was even a flex last week. As well. Lulu is still up. Does Ku ban it or risk it being given away first pick? Uh, Ku should ban, ban Lulu it. right here. Give at least over to CLG and take Rek'Sai for themselves. They would be more than happy with that. Uh, Hojin has preferred Rek'Sai over Elise anyway, so not even losing anything if you are the Ku Tigers. But CLG, this is such a hairy bot lane focus pick and ban phase with these uh, bans from them. Well, they really want to dominate that 2v2, and Cannon is a huge problem, especially for them on the red side. It could easily get flexed again, maybe even to the mid lane if Kuro has picked it up. So I think banning that is smart. Lulu will be coming in as the last ban. And now Darius is a pick we've seen from some teams. Give it to a top laner, leave him on his own. That Ooh. is it. Very early echo. Interesting. Don't think you needed to first pick that. And now, X Smithy played Echo in Madison Square Garden in the LCS finals. Also picked but, it quite early, but that is different. That is pre AP yeah. changes. Do we think this is even a Pobelta champion? I mean, it is a flex pick. I'm sure Pobelta would be able to pull it off. He's an old assassin player in that mid lane. But what I also find very interesting here is that Ku Tigers went for Azir very, very early. So, interesting fact Kuro is 3 and 10 on Azir all time. It has been a pick that Ku has liked to take in this last year, but it's not one that they've ever been very successful with. And when we saw Poe Belter's performance on Victor at Madison Square Garden, that leaves me uh, feeling pretty comfortable, and there's the Vagar possibly. Yeah, so again, remember Echo is going to be a flex pick. You can still take it to the jungle if you want to. It is not as strong as it was before, but just having the flex option makes it stronger. This is a CLG Siege composition. And you know what? I don't even think they care too much about Azir being picked away because he's a champion who's rushing in Nash's tooth. That means he has no MR against the Vagar. He's gonna be like, well, I'm just gonna stun you and then I'm gonna push your tower. Well, we'll see if Poe Belter can make that work. It has been banned against Counter Logic Gaming in two of their three games last week. So maybe using it in scrims. Ku Tigers, where do they go from here? And I need to find some way to get through Echo, through Vagar and to Trist on that back line. Yeah, very early they've shown both Solo laners for Ku Tigers. Obviously, take away the Azir. It was such a big pick for Poe Builder. And junglers have kind of fallen down the priority list. Probably also because CLG can just take Echo in that jungle if they want to. Elise and Jinx. So, a lot of scaling here for Ku. They're going to have a lot of time on their side, but I'm not seeing the greatest of wave clear. And where's the engage? Remember their game versus Flash Wolves? They had some issues engaging in that particular game. And this is another sort of engage list composition so far. They can maybe get an Elise Cocoon and follow up on it. Malphite support, dangerous. do it. Come on. <laughs> Gorilla, we know you've been playing some fun things. I love the Vagar here just because it yeah. takes it away from Ku. And Ku may have actually taken that in the second round of their draft as a support champion. Remember, Gorilla is the guy that pretty much got Vagar nerfed in the first place. Overall, it just feels to me like CLG were kind of baiting this earlier Zia pick from Ku Tigers because they had the Vagar ready. Again, it was banned last time they played each other, but because Ku Tigers had to take away Mordecai as a Gangplank and Lulu, there was no room for target banning. So CLG's been able to get now some counter matchups, also with the Ku Tigers showing those both soul laners instantly as priority takeaways from CLG. And of course, we do see the split push threat that will be the Fiora into Darius, something that if I remember Monty saying correctly, criminally underplayed. Criminally underplayed. Tournament. And a great champion to play into the Darius too. Now that does leave Echo in the jungle. That's going to give them some uh, great kiting potential. And it was one of Xmithy's more played champions yeah. in the summer season. But 
Then again, it's not quite so powerful in the jungle anymore after some nerfs. Oh, okay. Hey. Okay. So the reason for the Tom Kench lock in here is basically you look at a Vega or you look at a Fiora, obviously very much focused on a single target. Vega can basically one shot him. Fiora pops down his ulti. Tom Kench, when he eats, whoever is getting targeted there can deny that. He's very good at denying these one shot combos. However, his engage again is completely lackluster. All he has is his ulti, which is so predictable and so easy to run away from. So Ku Tigers are running one of these compositions where if they fall behind, the siege from CLG will take them out. Well, it's also the same is true on the other side, right? If Ku Tigers start to get ahead and they're in position on a turret with Azir, Tom Kench, and Darius, and you have to engage into them, it's going to be ugly. This is really going to be a battle of siege compositions in this game. Should be quite interesting to see who gets onto the turret first. Yeah, and talking about that in terms of the lane swap dynamics, Counter Logic Gaming have done pretty well in their previous three games, actually securing the first tower in all three of them. Now, admittedly, they do fall very quickly after if you in those lane swaps. Are we expecting something similar? Do CLG want to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe, or do they want to try to accelerate that uh, sieging power of their team composition? I mean, CLG can be more than happy taking standard lanes here. You want Fiora into Darius early. You, you have a Braum to stand a lane, one of the stronger 2v2 lanes in terms of kill pressure, against a Tom Kench, who's not the strongest laning supporter. Yeah, give them standard lanes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's going to look very good here for CLG. Yeah. It's just about who can set it up first. So get on Twitter. At LOL Esports, use the hashtag CLG win or hashtag Ku win. And uh, let us know which composition you prefer. Well, the crowd is very excited that you're reminding them of the Twitter vote, Deficio. I mean, it's what I'm here for, right? It is Group A at the 2015 League of Legends World Championships. These are the two teams currently sharing first place. Only one of them will have that three and one record. Council Logic Gaming making their way into lane. So again, also with Poe Builder on this Vagar, one of the things he often does, he can force you to take cleanse, and he can run a teleport. Double teleport has been so strong in this tournament so far because, again, the amount of map pressure you have, the room you have to go and clear side lanes and you can still force a fight on the other side of the map is very impactful. However, Vagar is not the guy who's going to walk into the side lane and split push. Well, coming in too, even if he starts to fall behind early like he did in the first match between these two teams, at least he can get back to lane quickly, continue farming. He won't fall quite so far behind. Let's see the level one from Ku Tigers. Notice how Prey on Jinx is sitting under his tower, not showing himself up there. Do you want to try and sneak up to the top side for the lane swap and see if he can go unspotted? CLG will have to like peek in and see if they can see him there. Most teams never do that. You just go into the jungle, place your deep boards, and then you don't really think who's sitting up there and Prey can just recall, or he can stay if he wants to get that 2v1 on top side. He did fake the recall there early on, so it looks like he will be sticking around. We'll see if CLG call this. They don't have a lot of information. We see Rilla holding back right there, waiting for the minion wave before entering that lane. And it looks like we will get a lane swap after all. Yeah, so Ku Tigers, we talked about this super quick just before, how CLG could be very happy taking standard lanes with Fiora into Darius. Again, the double if Aphromo combo with Tristana and Braum. Kutaga says, nope, that's not going to happen. We take the swap. Looking at this late game, too, if we do get into an even situation late, Gorilla's play, who he decides to eat, could deny a lot of CLG's damage. So really, all eyes on him if we get to a late game scenario where everything is even up. I have to ask, Fisher, you were talking about Tom Kench becoming more and more prolific as the tournament plays out. Is it purely to avoid the single target damage, or does Tom offer some additional strengths that are just not as obvious to his demeanor. I mean, the, way, the main thing he does offer is, as you just said yourself, denying, you know, the combo, denying one of your carries getting one-shotted, denying a big AOE ability like a Shockwave maybe, as we saw HQ do last week. That's what he does really well. He's not really going to be ganked in the mid lane. It's Koro instead who's going to get ganked by CLG. Right, coming in right here. Quen's already down. He's going to be in trouble. Flashes over the wall. Both summoner spells blown for some time from Zion. What that's going to do, though, is we're not seeing a traditional fast push this game. We noticed that Ku already has three people down in that bottom side to help farm. Meanwhile, Prey has initiated a freeze in the top side, so this is a much more traditional Korean-style lane swap. They're trying to get Prey ahead early, and that's what the Korean-style lane swap really does. Going to start pushing it now, though. I'm still surprised that CLG went for the mid lane gank instead of walking top where Prey was sitting on this Jinx. Force him away, you can break the freeze super easy, and you get Zion Spartan instantly into the lane. Instead, 
they went for the mid lane against a guy who has cleanse as well. So a little bit surprised by that one from CLG instead of going for Prey, but obviously they don't know, or they didn't know where the rest of the crew members were. Well, take a look at this. Double Lift is in trouble, and a quiet I taste is there. Gorilla flashes forward. He is going to devour him, spits him back out. Exhaust is ticking away. Double is below 100 HP. Smith and Gorilla going to chase him down. First blood to top lane, Darius. Now Aframu, he's getting chased down. Catfish is hungry. Devour cooldown. It's going to get spit backwards. Aframu's below 200 and he's going to go down. A few more hits and the spin for the win from Smith. Right there, one of the biggest problems with was that Aframu dropped the exhaust too early. He dropped it while Doublelift was still inside Tom Kench onto Smith. So there really wasn't any effect from that summoner spell. But getting very cocky, I think they've been thrown because they're not used to lane swapping like this at all. This is how it is done in Korea. It is so rare you have a 2v2 with the enemy top lane on enemy support where they can go and kill you in the west it's so often just fast push in on that tower bounce it back you never have these early fights and also the tom kench getting the three stacks onto double if maybe underestimating the damage a little bit or the amount of cc he can provide when he just sticks to this target and then shoots you back that's absolutely massive too darius is going to have a phage at under five minutes into this game and that pressure that Sometimes Fiora can put on, is not going to be there. Smep also still has TP available, should he want to make a play on the map with that early item. I'm really glad you mentioned the pressure from Zion, because of the fact that he's the player that we're looking at to try step up for CLG. Doublelift has had some good games when he's been uh, held by Lulu in the mid lane, but again, just being caught out by Smep. Zion needs to be careful now, because what we see very often happen is that whenever two guys are against the top lane up here and they push him into tower, they set up for that early dive. Either the jungler moves up or your top lane just TPs in and 3v1 dives him. So in case Ku feels threatened on the bottom side, they can make that play. But because they've now sent down Hojin as backup, they're more looking just to secure farm on, on the Darius. They're not looking to deny Zion right now. Zion trying to defend that tower as best he can. I did see Xmithy moving up, but isn't going to go up to help the tower. So Prey and Gorilla getting a lot of damage onto that top outer tower. Wow! Whoa. Double left even gets apprehended back. Forced to rocket jump over. And Smeb is already looking so comfortable on this Darius. Well, double lift being behind. When we look at the games played of Worlds so far, double lift accounts in the three games CLG has played for 35.7% of his team's damage, which is a huge percentage. And he's only number two behind Incarnation at 718 damage per minute. So this guy is crucial to the damage output of his team. And now that he's behind, it's a large problem, especially since Smeb is at the top of all top laners at 25% damage. So him with an edge is a big, big problem. Once again, though, CLG looking towards the mid lane. You gotta play the side lanes instead. And there's the bounce back. Smithy's in trouble. Cleanse goes down. Kuro, wow! Uh, he just gets insta gibbed And that was the no MR you were talking about. Yeah, again, this is the thing we said about Azir. You go Nash's Tooth first. You can't go Athenes. It just sets down your build too much or sets it too behind too much. So he's very, very squishy, but he delayed that cleanse for a long, long time. I'm not sure what he was waiting for. Didn't cleanse and instantly try and dash out. One thing about Ku's composition, though, is that as long as Azir gets a wall down in the late game, he doesn't actually need to be there for a lot of these team fights because Jinx is going to be providing a lot of the late game damage and not going to be quite as susceptible to Vagar. And just to go back to your point about double if before here with the Tristana, Another reason it's so important for CLG that they're winning the bottom lane is like when we watch Cloud9 play. You need to rotate that AD carry early for tower pressure. Tristana in the mid game, when it comes to overall damage, is not the greatest. She needs three, four items before she really starts shining there. But she's good at taking down towers at all stages in the game. So unless Double Lift can take down an early tower and go mid, that's how he makes up for that weak mid game. If he falls behind, suddenly you have such a large period of time where he won't really be that useful. Well, he has, has fallen behind, rather. Actually gone for a Cutlass first item on Tristana. I also want to point out that our AP Echo, or the reworked AP Echo, Chilling Smite and early Sidestone for Smithy. So some changes here from not only the champion picks, but the itemization as well. Both games where CLG played Ku now, he's gone for very early Sidestone. Normally he gets it like 11, 14 minutes. Now, it's like... Early on in the game. Gorilla is looking to eat Aphromo again. Uh, he's going to eat him indeed. Throws him onto the Chompers and Hojin sinks the fangs in. CLG were not expecting the unbenched Kench. 
such a great combo with Jinx. I mean, we saw this same combination coming in from AHQ, but it was great in team fights, but it didn't, they weren't so crisp in the laning phase, right? But eating him and then going straight into the choppers is brutal. It really is. And Monty, this is what you'd mentioned before picks and bans. How Ku could demonstrate uh, something unexpected. This is great mastery of the Tom Kench Darius duo and then playing around his CC. But still, G's really disrespecting Tom Kench. Like, there was no backup coming up, Doublelift getting in range, so uh, Afrimu could jump to him with his W or anything. No, 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 just like, yeah, let him eat me. Shoots it back into the CC, at least shows up. And very easy for Ku Tigers with all three kills for Gorilla to get in range, get the stacks down, which normally is so difficult on a Tom Kench because you're so slow. Ku Tigers doing just a wonderful job of chaining objective into objective right now. Take down that bottom turret. They're fine in the top lane. Smeb is just safely farming up. He knows that X Smithy's in his side of the jungle, so he's playing back, playing passively. X Smithy not really having an option here besides getting that red buff. They see him there at the Raptors, immediately go for the dragon. So Ku's starting to snowball in a pretty big way. Really are accelerating ahead as we get into that 10 minute mark. Let's see how Doublelift and Afro decide to bounce back. They're down in CS, down in kills and assists. They've lost their tower as well, so it's even unsafe for them to farm. And while all that's going on, Zion now has to deal with a 2-0 Darius up top as well. It's difficult all across the map. So now that CLG is in a position where basically the way to get back in the game, the way to get gold is again by taking down some of these early tier 1 towers. You're going to have to need to switch your jungle attention from the top side of the map to the bottom side. So we need them to push it out here with Tristan and Braum, have x then roam around bottom side, place a few deep wards, and allow Doublelift to get to this tier 1 tower and kill it. So you can then rotate to mid and use Poe Builder's massive stun to create that zone or one-shot someone and is then that take all? Tower. Is that all they've got to do? Yeah, it's sufficient. I mean, so it sounds right. so simple. Also, while you're hoping that uh, CLG does that, the alternative is Jinx, no slouch in terms of pushing down towers herself. So they could always be one tower ahead. And look at that. Oh, Zion's in so much trouble. He'd used his repost earlier, anticipating the dunk, and it didn't come down. I like CLG, the CLG, they're going all in. The Chompers are going to catch them. The Super Mega Death Rocket does the splash. And Gorilla gets out! That Grey Health tankiness is so effective. We do see the Chrono Break as Smithy goes back. Here comes the kill. It's secured by Smithy. It's four on three, but CLG are low. That is good. Bray getting excited for the double kill. And Hojin should secure one more for the team. A four for one trade. We just talked about the call here that CLG were trying to make. Okay, player on the bottom side. Look at the pink boards in the river. Look at the D board they just placed. The problem is, this Tom Kench is winning the game for Ku Tigers because look how much time it takes for CLG to hit Gorilla. Grey HP comes in, so he's not even about to die yet. And he stays alive when Prey's about to die. Nope, he just numbs him in. Like, yeah, he, you're not gonna die, my friend, don't worry. He's not gonna one-shot you just yet, so he has to use it on the support. That pops out at the end, and even though CLG was faster, we did see Doublelift get tied up by a cocoon at the start of that fight. Hojin choosing to pick on the Tristana, and then Kuro's just there for the cleanup. So very clean play from the Ku Tigers coming in and denying that. But man, this Tom Kench is huge. And you know, you and I were talking about this before the game. Tom Kench is really good right now, and this is why. He offers so much more as well, other than just being so annoying and denying your AD carry from dying. We just saw how he could be a bit aggressive in the 2v2, how he can stick to targets. It's hard to take down early game for these AD carries. Let's see what happens top though. Zion's button is going aggressive. Oh, Zion's going down. Well, manages to well, lunge out towards the tower. That, that's it, thanks to Fisher. You got me covered. Grand challenge didn't work out. But again, just the synergy between the soft CC that Darius offers. Afro's flashed in. That's a good event horizon, but Gorilla's just going to eat Smed. We do see the Dark Matter dropping. Time Winder goes out. Chrono Break goes out. They've traded a kill for a tower. Bray's still alive and running around. Event horizon is going to come back up. A one for one trade. The Ku also secured a tower. But that's just not enough at this stage. Look at the mid lane right now. Azir pushing forward against Double Lift's Tristana. He nearly got the kill there against Tristana in the end. Still has his ultimate too. And Tristana's just been set, set behind also when it comes to damage on towers, not getting that early physical damage by obviously rushing towards an infinity edge. He's trying to build more to take down these big tanks like the Tom Kench, like the Darius. And with the early two kills, he didn't have 1,550 gold. The double is just so far behind and running a suboptimal build as well for what their composition wants to do. It's gonna be a very difficult road for CLG if there is one shining light. Cobalt is wave clear on that Vigor and the strength of Event Horizon could be the only thing that could turn this.
is at the moment Zion's behind, Double's behind. And you know, Kuro's Azir, considering the early gang, considering the early pressure, he's done phenomenal in that mid lane. Yeah, uh, he's he's held it together. Let's take a look at that replay again. Afro just completely missing Glacial Fisher right there. Smap gonna get eaten right out of that event horizon. Spit right back out. Smithy tanking that turret, but gets a nice chrono break to stay alive. And Prey here just firing from the backside. Pojan doing a little bit of damage and getting the return kill. Prey just skirting the outside and dodging the Grom Q. And once again, Tom Kench makes it so much harder for you to just one-shot that one target and then back away. You have to invest so much extra time because he's there, and he's not even hit his final form yet. He's got into big team fights, but he's going to be even more annoying. <sighs> oh, I can't wait to see that abyssal voyage. See if we can deliver Smith to the back line. Black Cleaver has been collected, and Ku, they're making it very clear they want that top outer turret. They've had a number of members up there and tried to shove that wave in, tried to push it down. It's the last remaining outer turret. Okay, Abyssal Voyage, that was used defensively. No, it's aggressive, I lied! Event Horizon is down! Prey's in a little bit of trouble, he will get eaten for a few seconds longer and spat out. Xmithy's gonna go down before he can Chrono Break out. But Prey gets excited before getting dunked! It's a double kill, make that a triple kill for Smebs, Darius. We just touched on Abyssal Voyage. Willa has huge <laughs> balls to make that play. <laughs> Prey as well! Absolutely massive to just go into the front line like that on the Jinx, but they relied on Smeb to clean it up. Didn't matter really that Bray went down because the damage had already done. Got a few rockets in there for the AoE, got his ult up, and then there's Smeb for the cleanup. For everyone at home in solo queue, normally you do, do not, not put do your AD carry in the middle of the enemy team. That's not how you're supposed to use it. Gorilla though, tricking poor Bray. Like, oh, it's safe, don't worry. We're just gonna rotate down towards the mid lane. And then in the middle of the team, Prey and Gorilla arrive. And look at this event, Horizon 2. It really doesn't do actually a whole lot over the course of this team fight. Dropped a little bit early, and they just come up right in the middle of that circle. Exceptional positioning from Kuro. Empress Divide keeps him safe. Soldiers get the damage down. For a man who's historically not been great on this champion, that is phenomenal play. I, I'm so happy that we finally saw one thing that we missed, I think, in the AHQ game was really good Tom Kenschultz. But it's so powerful when you can use it properly. Very difficult to plan around, to organize with the rest of your team because of the way that it's, you know, it's a little bit delayed, takes some time, isn't truly global. But that was a very good use of it. The thing, Monty, enables cross-map rotations. <laughs> I love it. Tom Kemp. I love it. Kobe's rolling in his grave because it's a straight line, and I believe it's called a translation. Was his we've uh, been, previous we've been over I've been I know. With Kobe. We're I've opening been over old this. wounds. We're opening old wounds, gentlemen. <laughs> Zion Spartan is going to have some backup from Xmithy. Level 10 to the same level 10 of Smith, both relatively low level. And we have a Kuro in the mid lane, two levels over Hobelter. Big, big change. Yeah, but it's only a Tiamat done so far for Zion Spartan. He's very far behind in this matchup. And Ku going to go ahead and take their second dragon. I mean, we're looking at about an 8,000 gold lead here at 16. Oh, that's Tom Kench. Well, here comes Gorilla. The Abyssal Voyage will land. I don't think he's brought any friends to play with. Aframu's now on the front line, and Double Lifter's rocket jumped in. Devour goes down onto Smith. Going to buy enough time for Kuro to arrive. Afro still on the retreat. The Decimate comes out from Smith, and so does the Dunk. Now Pobelt is in trouble. He's trying to get away. Flash is still available, and Smithy and Afro are dealing with the Catfish. Gorilla is going to throw Xmithy onto the Chompers, and Prey gets excited. Super Mega Death Rocket was fired a little while ago, and that unbreakable shield will keep Aframu alive for a few seconds longer. Four members of CLG down for only Smed. I feel like we have seen this before. A guy is getting caught out, Gorilla arrives, buys enough time for the rest of his team to show up. Smed does go down in the end, but doesn't matter because the rest of the Ku Tigers are here. I'm a big Tom Kench fan. This pick is so fantastic if you can play it well as a team. Well, I'm just happy that we get to see it again because we're going to see it a lot, I think, moving forward in this tournament. But just looking at Gorilla's solo queue in Europe, like 50% of his last 20 games are on top catch. Just amazingly spamming that champion so hard in solo queue. And it's great to see it come out. And the Vagar's coming too, I promise you, for Gorilla. I trust you, Monty, in that one. Still. Pick a man face. We were looking at the comps, but like, oh, none of these teams can really afford falling behind because, like, the siege compositions, there's not a whole lot of engage coming in. Good Tigers has said, you know, from the early game, we're just going to take such a massive advantage, just like last week. Let's look at it. Smep takes the fight against Iron. Gorilla jumps in, and right now it looks good for CLG. It's a massive gang on to the top side. Obviously, Zion is dropping so low because Smep is insanely strong right now. 
Maybe buy time. Yeah, buys the time. Gorilla gets in there to save Smep, grabs him out at the end, and we're already into another fight right here, CLG pushing forward. Well, we do see Gorilla, he goes forward, throws out the oh, tongue, beautiful. double lift gets apprehended backwards and sunk by a Noxion guillotine. Kuro's gonna clean up Zion Spartan, not after one repost, keeps him alive a few seconds longer. CLG get the tower for the loss of two. Abyssal Voyage comes out, and a decent time winder from X Smithy will get them away. But two deaths for that top outer turret. Who is a team? You know, we talked about coming in. Smeb has 25% of his team's damage, uh, which is the highest of any top laner. It's going to be higher now. Yeah, it's going to be way higher now as 7-2-2. Two, and two. But this is a team that the top 80 carry and mid laner are all within 3% or so of each other. So the balance of damage dealt is incredibly even. So this is one of the reasons why Ku is very difficult to shut down, because if someone starts falling behind, the other members of the team pick it up. They play so well as a unit. They may not have the strongest individual players. I mean, Kuro and Prey have had their ups and downs this season. Smev has been probably the most reliable player alongside Gorilla, but they know how to play the map. They know how to play as a unit, and that is their strength. I'd say in this group A, Ku Tigers have some of the strongest players. And that's why they can have these games where, despite not normally being a good early game team, they can punish you so hard if you make mistakes. This game, it all started in the lane swap, where suddenly in the bottom lane, Gorilla and Smep together gets a 2v0 kill, a 2v2 kill, I guess, onto CLG to take two kills for it. Over to Smep, he gets so far ahead in this game, and then suddenly CLG just starts falling apart. Well, CLG have basically collapsed. This is the second largest gold lead at 20 minutes of any match this tournament. The only one greater was EDG versus Bangkok Titans. Double lift and Afro. Gonna try team up here on Hoja, but here comes Smith. It is 3v2, and Gorilla on the Kench is far, far away. But Kuro is not. Empress Divide will split them in two. Smith's got one, Hojin's got another, and now the Super Mega Death Rocket splashes. X Smithy's forced to retreat. Pobelt and Zion are on the wrong side of the map, and Zion's not gonna get anything back. Four for one. Again! Again! Well, this just reeks of desperation from CLG. There's nothing more they can do at this point. They have to try and catch people out because of the how far they are behind, but that's going to be a Baron. This is going to be a very quick game for the Goo Tigers. Yeah, we've seen some very good games for these Siege compositions, but we also see games now where they fall behind, and there's really nothing you can do if your main objective as a composition is to groove on a tower and start hitting it and killing it, because it's too easy for the other team with map control to flank you, to engage on you in so many ways, and that team fight is always won by the team who's obviously so far ahead. So Ku Tigers can just keep taking these fights. Sinji knows we have to go all in, or we're not gonna get back in this game. Uh, normally you wouldn't go for this with the pink ward right up there at the top of your screen, just because they don't have any vision on who's coming in on this. And Kuro gets that ultimate off. They're able to bounce people around right outside of the Baron Vidic. Smithy has no mana, so he has to back off. And Prey manages to hit an ultimate. They take one down, but the price they pay is pretty dear. And we see Smeb get enough heal at the end of that fight with his Q just to move on forward and uh, clean it up. Oh, great play with the Baron now. Baron power play enabled. The average team will get around 3.3 thousand gold during the course of this Baron. Get themselves a couple of towers. Kuvo already cracked open the base. Oh my word, Zion's in trouble. And Prey just crits him down. The zap connects onto X Smithy. Inhibitor's gonna fall shortly. His minion wave's pushing towards the top lane, so Ku can shove that in. And they will need to deal with that bottom lane. Also, just note, Ku's only lost one tower this entire game. They have spent so much time on CLG's half of the map. That's the nature of these two compositions. When you get two comps with very similar win conditions, it can get really snowbally really fast because at this point, even if CLG starts to set up, Ku's poke is just greater because they have such a huge item advantage. There's not a lot they can do. What a message this sends to the rest of the group and the rest of the teams at the World Championships. Seeing how Ku have just dismantled CLG from the very beginning, from the lane swap, Gonna give some more difficulties to the rest of today's picks and bands, let alone the rest of the tournament. You see some wave clear coming out from Pobelt. Wow. Look at that! Just combo down. I didn't know Ku's composition could poke that effectively as well. They're gonna get another tower. I don't think it happened when you're 14k up at uh, 22 minutes. Quick shot. That's fair. That's fair. And you have a time kinch. And a time kinch. That's it. It was enabled. Yo. Right. Teleport coming in from Pobelt. In fact, cancelled. It was just to pull Ku Tigers back. Smithy's still sitting on the front line, but where is the double of Tongue Lash? 
finds Zion. And a quiet taste not applied. Decimate spins by Smear, but Afro's forced to retreat. Zion just gets booted away by Emperor's Divide. And Kuro's gonna Sharima shuffle his way in for one. Pobelter will find a kill. They've traded mid lane for mid lane. But double lift and Pobelter are the last ones remaining as they run away. Apprehend doesn't find its target. Ku Tigers, they're on to the Nexus Toads before the Baron has even expired. 23 and a half minutes on the clock. An undeniable number one seed in Group A. Ku Tigers from Korea. What a route. I mean, one of the shortest games that we have had at this World Championship. Incredibly one-sided match, but that's going to put Ku in a great position. They only need to win one game now to be guaranteed first place in this group. And they have the 2-0 versus CLG in case they do tie. So obviously, Ku Tigers will then get the highest spot in the group. But really, two games in a row now between these two teams. Ku Tigers mechanically outplay CLG in the early game. We have early fights, early ganks, and they all go in the favor of the Ku Tigers. As an AD carry and a support in a lane swap, you should never, ever, 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 ever die <laughs> against the enemy support in top lane. It should not be possible. CLG gave up two kills early. This Tom Kench pick surprised them so much, they did not respect what Gorilla could do. Gorilla was 1-1-20. One, one, and 20. He had such a high kill contribution out of, what, 27 kills in this game. He was constantly there, constantly looking on the map to make plays. and. You know, he didn't have the greatest game against the Flash Wolves, but we look at his three other performances now, and he has been so crucial to the Ku Tigers' success, hitting those Morgana Bindings, incredibly impressive Thresh play, and now adding Tom Kench. He's a hard guy to shut down. That was a perfect demonstration of what Tom Kench can offer team compositions yeah. Yeah. with a fairly linear play style. You know that Siege comp, the single target burst from CLG? All of it gets countered by Tom. Question is, how hard is it to pull off? Because now every other team has got such a limited amount of time to either find a counter or to find a way to steal it first and then yeah. do it themselves. I mean, one of the counters is going to be like these big AOE effect things like a Rumble ulti, maybe coming where eating one guy doesn't really do a whole lot for Tom Kench and his team. The problem is Rumble is not really in the meta. So like that option is not there right now. We need to find some other ones. I think Azir could work well against him. But really what Gorilla did as well is just his positioning on the map. Because whenever there was a fight, he was close enough to join in, buy yeah. time for the rest of the team, and they could come in and kill CLG. Yeah, I mean, I was... Love it. I, that was... I'm glad we got to see the ult used really well for the first Ascending time. Ascending A to carry. Ascending A just plopped him right <laughs> into the middle of the team. Who well, it did work out. Ku Tigers with a convincing victory over CLG. Let's head to the analyst desk to take a look at exactly how they earned that number one spot. Thank you, gentlemen. An absolute stomp. There's really no nice way to put it there. Uh, I mean, a nice showing by Ku, absolutely, but it was pure domination across the map. 23-49, a new fastest game for the tournament that is a non-surrender game, beating out the C9 AHQ game by nine seconds. I love how they play a composition that is similar to all the things that Cloud9 and CLG have been running the whole Siege with Darius and just play it ten times better. With the Kench, they're like... Kh unbench the Kench, and then this guy takes over the game during laning phase of Roma. It was perfect. Loved it. One thing I do want to point out is it's the little things at the start of the game that are going to get you an advantage. And double lift tanked two turret shots for absolutely no reason. All of a sudden, he no potion. He's a turret shot down. Tom Kench walks into his lane. They cannot fight, and it ends up in a double kill. Like, little things on the map that, like, you're in a lane swap, you think maybe this won't matter, comes back and bites them absolutely massive. So maybe some nerves. I don't know what's going on with CLG, but they looked so much more crisp even last week than what that game gave advantage of. Well, well, I have a metaphorical representation of what happened that game. We have right here. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Well, they got blown out of the water. They, they got blown out of the water. Okay. You should have you gotten down and, uh, you know. There was, no, there was no wind in their sails. Gotcha. I mean, Ku was, I, I loved it. Like, Everything in this game was so impressive and showing different styles. We mentioned that the Azir was 3 and 10 earlier in, in uh, Ku Tiger's, I guess, career. That didn't matter at all.
Yeah, and the other thing I do want to hit on quickly is how much of a confidence team Koo Tigers are. You saw that they played a little bit more reserved at the start of their last game, and then when they found the like recipe to take them apart, they did it in very quick fashion. For a minute one this time around, they just completely took this game over. Yeah, and you were talking about picks and bands where they came out with a composition that was similar to what the North American teams are doing, Cloud9 and CLG, with a sieging AD carry and then a sieging mid laner in Azir. But what I think they did better is they paired it with the Tom Kench. They looked at the Morgana, and it was a last pick support to counter the team composition that they saw. They let the Vagar through. It was something that was banned against Poe Belter in two of the games, and they saw that this was going to come out once they took the Azir. Ku knew this was going to happen, and they were either going to play Morgana or Tom Kench to stop Vagar from having the siege, but then they figured out, let's play the Tom Kench. It gives us an engage option onto their back line, because what if this composition doesn't get into a position where you, because it's Siege, right? You need some type of engage, which they were talking about in the cast, but when you have Tom Kench, you can use the ultimate to get in to force a fight and have some fun with it. And I think Tom Sp Kench is actually going to become a tournament meta pick here. I think he's incredibly powerful in the right hand. Speaking of Tom Kench engaged 14 minutes into the game, we saw a perfect example of that. Uh, Tom Kench porting into the rest of the team with his 80 carry <laughs> in mean, tow it sounds was troll. for awesome. the bait. Because none of them are in position to where this fight happens. He ports into all four of CLG's team members, and as soon as it happens, I mean, Darius is coming from the other side of the river. Ports in, the stun's already out. Both of CLG's stuns get layered really poorly, and then right at the end, bam, bait. One of the things that Tom Kench has is that he's really difficult to know how hard he is to kill because of his E, so you're not expecting you don't really know how much damage you need to take him down. And they thought they had enough, but he has, with the Merc Trez, the purchase early, just enough time to eat Jinx. His team arrives, Kuro flashes in with a huge Azir wall, and from then on, it's Darius cleanup. That was a pick that did it for me. That fact that he was able to go Merc Treads, so no one else had to, because as soon as you're in the stun, he eats you, he can run through himself. Yeah. You can go your Berserker Greaves, you can go your Sork Boots, doesn't matter, because Tom's just always going to be there to be able to just get you out of that AoE. Gorilla had one of the most beautiful performances out of an individual player we've seen all tournament. Yeah, I think Gorilla definitely deserves a lot of props there, and Kuro, with the Azir wall, stopped the exit. It was a perfect Azir wall, there was no way through it, so it forced them to fight in that choke, and it forced them to fight in the Azir, and where the Darius is. You gotta so. fight in the river where Kent <laughs> lives. <laughs> and river King. Well, Kent lived everywhere in that game. Uh, fantastic game for Koo Tigers. They're gonna feel good starting a long day off with a win. CLG, though, they're gonna have to find a way to bounce back. Now, we didn't need to take a quick break, but keep it tuned right here because the action continues in three and a half with Flash Wolves versus Pain Gaming. Stay with us. Exhaust is ticking away, double is below 100 HP. Smith and Grill are going to chase him down. First blood to top lane, Darius. Smithy's going to go down before he can Chrono break out. The Prey gets excited before getting dunked. It's a double kill, made that a triple kill. You see Gorilla, he goes forward, throws out the oh, tongue. Beautiful. Double lift gets apprehended backwards and sunk by a Noxian guillotine. hojin has got another, and now the Super Mega Death Rocket splashes. Smithy's forced to retreat. Poe Belter and Zion are on the wrong side of the map. An undeniable number one seed in Group A. Ku Tigers from Korea.